In this situation, a soccer ball is on the soccer field. It's going to be kicked up into the air and it will leave the ground at 33 meters per second at an angle of 38 degrees above the horizontal. So it's going to come back down and hit the ground. That's why delta y is equal to zero because it starts on the ground and ends up on the ground. Its trajectory will look something like this. We want to find the total time it takes to travel. We want to figure out how high it goes. So what's the maximum height? That's part B. I want to figure out its range. So that's from here to here. How far downfield? Delta X or an uppercase R. And also, what is its minimum speed? It will always travel slowest at its highest point, which is right here. But remember, it doesn't stop there because it's still moving over. That's where I solve for that minimum speed. With this type of question, you have to start it by drawing a triangle to figure out its initial velocity horizontally and its initial velocity vertically. That uh, requires drawing this vector, the length of this arrow uh, representing the initial velocity of 33 meters per second. That, remember, is at an angle of 38 degrees. That's the initial angle. That's this. This just represents this first moment, its velocity at this very, at the very beginning only. See, the problem is we cannot solve these questions with 33 meters per second. To figure out how high it goes, I need to know how fast it's going up. That is that length right here what I have labeled V sub zero Y. Of the 33 meters per second, how much of that is upwards at that moment? We also will need to know, in order to find the range, how much of that is to the right. That is V sub zero X. And so that requires doing some trig. Now you have a right triangle. You know the angle and the hypotenuse. So to find v sub 0 x, remember cosine, the cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. I need to find that adjacent side because that's what that is. That's the adjacent side. So if I multiply both sides by h, which in this case is 33, then the adjacent side equals h times the cosine of the angle. So that's how I'll find that. Using the same process, that's how we'll find this, but this is opposite the angle, v, y, v sub zero y. And so I'll use sine, because sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, and so the opposite side equals the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. Be sure your calculator is in degree mode. So to find this adjacent side, multiply 33 times the cosine of 38 degrees. 33 times the cosine of 38, that will give us this value here for V sub zero X. I've already done that. And it came out to be 26. Again, that is the hypotenuse 33 times the cosine of 38 degrees. You get 26. To find V sub zero Y, that's gonna be here. That's the opposite side. Multiply the hypotenuse of 33 times the sine of 38 degrees. Hypotenuse, 33, times the sine of 38 degrees. And that comes out to be 20.3 meters per second. All right, so anything that involves the y-axis, I'll be using that number now for the initial velocity. Anything that involves the x-axis, I'll be using this value from now on. All right, so let's find the total time in the air. The total time in the air, that's going to be in the y-axis. There's a variety of ways to do this. For this entire journey, the trip, the, uh, delta y is equal to zero. I'm going to solve this this way. Again, there are different ways to do this. We've done different ways in classes, in, in, in class. I'm going to, I'm going to use this, this one. So v sub zero y times t plus one half a y t squared. You could also solve for the velocity uh, going up at the time it takes to go up halfway and then double that time to get the time it goes up and down because it takes half the time to go up half the time to come down. Well, I'm going to do it this way like I said. So that's zero. This is 
20.3 t. That's plus a half negative 9.8 t squared. Remember that the acceleration on the y-axis is always negative g. Now, I can factor out a t because I have t here, and this is t times t. So 0 equals t times 20.3. Half of negative 9.8 is 4.9. I still have a t left over because this, I factored one out. I can divide 3 by t. It cancels. 0 divided by t is still 0. So 0 equals 20.3 minus 4.9 t. So when you solve for t, I'm going to add that to the other side and then divide through. Uh, I get 20.3 divided by 4.9. And that comes out to be 4.14 seconds. OK, so that's part A. To find part B, to find the height, there's a variety of ways I can do this. I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to use an h for height. You can use a delta y maximum or delta y top or whatever you want. But I'm using h. I am choosing to use this equation, v sub 0 y. I'm still on the y-axis, plus vy at the, at the top. So I'm going to put maximum. I'll put an h for height. How about that? OK, the, it's velocity at the at maximum height times, now I'm going to use the half the time, right? Because I'm interested in its height, its vertical position, delta y, at this point, which is only halfway. So I'm only use half the time. Well, this is 1 half times v sub 0 y is 20.3 plus, well, its velocity at the top, it's stopped rising. And so that's 0. I'm in the y-axis. It's stopped going up right here. And then that's going to be half of this time, and so 4.14 divided by 2. And when you solve for that, you get a height of 21 meters. To find the range, the range is in the x-axis. So for part C, delta x equals v sub 0 x times t plus 1 half a x t squared. Well, v sub 0 x is 26. All right, For every moment it's in the air, it travels 26 meters horizontally. And that doesn't change. Remember, there's no acceleration in the x-axis. So this is 26 meters per second times the total time in the air at 4.14 seconds. If you wanted to run underneath this ball as it's traveling through the air like that, you'd have to run at this, at this 26 meters per second for every, every moment at a constant speed. The ball would be right over you as you went along. Um, it travels horizontally with constant speed. That came out to be 108 meters. I hope you have a big soccer field. <laughs> And then the last part, D, it's minimum speed. And this is really just to make a conceptual point. It's, it's always traveling slowest at its highest point. But it hasn't stopped moving. It's only stopped rising. It always has its horizontal speed. And so although the vertical velocity dropped down to zero because it stopped rising, the, velocity, the overall velocity is the horizontal velocity at that point. All right, so it can never go slower than 26 meters per second, and that occurs right up here at its highest point. So V minimum equals 26 meters per second, and it's at the highest point. All right, again, at the highest point, it has just Vx. It, it can never lose that. And that's it.